What's up, YouTube? Sharman X Soft here coming at you guys with a brand new Friday to 13th the game video. And today we're going to be showing you another video on the virtual cabin, but today's video is going to be about all of the Easter eggs and theories that you all have presented me with. Now, I know this video is late. I was supposed to bring it about a Monday or two ago, but unfortunately, right after the conservatory video came out, my son needed to be uh, rushed to the emergency room. He had to be hospitalized for, you know, a good couple of days. And it was a pretty tough time. So we fell behind here with the videos, but we are back in action. And I want to give a huge shout out to all of you guys who, uh, you know, showed all your support over Twitter for uh, my son and everything that was going on. So, uh, you know, he's doing a lot better now, and I appreciate everybody's support on that. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. All right. So the first Easter egg that you all have found is going to be a huge shout out right here to K.I. Lee Sky. Now, K.I. Lee Sky has officially found the blue and white towel that has just been a pain in my butt since the cabin came out, and that would be in Friday the 13th, Part 9, Jason Goes to Hell. Now, he says, when Debbie and her boyfriend are in the tent, you will see on the right-hand corner of the screen after she comes in from peeing, they show it for a split second, and he's absolutely correct. It is really fast, but you can clearly see that is a blue and white towel right down there. You know, a lot of people have shown me hand towels and whatnot, and I do appreciate you guys looking for it, but it was really, really hard to find, very hard to find, and uh, K.I. Lee Sky, I believe, has officially found the correct towel right there so hats off to ki lee sky and uh thank you very much for uh going ahead and finding that and being very descriptive and making it easy for me to figure out what you're talking about now with the next shout out here is going to go to kfbr392 who has found the lamp that you will see not only here but also in the item room in friday the 13th part six you'll see that in his comment he actually quotes the uh the timestamp in the movie where i will see this lamp along with showing me photos of it so hats off to you there kfbr392 you have officially found the lamp that is not only here but also in the display case in the item room guys if you are going to show me some stuff or you would like to uh you know spot some different items and tell me where to find them please you know take take it like these guys are doing it be very descriptive show me some timestamps or something because when you all tell me hey it's in part three or hey it's in part four it's it's a lot of work to go back through that entire movie again and again and again which i don't mind doing but obviously if i missed it before it's going to be really hard for me to notice it again so if you do know where an item is please be descriptive so that i'm paying attention for the right spot to find that item so give you guys that shout out all right, now this next one here is kind of tough, okay? Wolf Soldier 99 is going to get the shout out right here for the bottom trophy. Now, somebody before, I believe it was Big Wayne, had found the top baseball player trophy, but the bottom one we still left as, you know, needing to be found. Now, Wolf Soldier 99 has went and spoken with uh, Ronnie Hobbs multiple occasions, and uh, she's told me and showed me a tweet that Ronnie Hobbs has confirmed that the trophy is, in fact, in the display case from Pakenak Lodge. So, now, if you look at it, it's hard to kind of match it with any of the trophies, but if you look at the one on the bottom right, you'll see that the base matches pretty much perfectly. So, we're going to go with the bottom right trophy right there is going to be where we're going to find this one right next to the baseball trophy in Pakenak Lodge in Friday the 13th Part 2. So, that shout-out would go to Wolf Soldier 99 because she did a lot of work digging for that. She was tweeting me like there was no tomorrow, really, really, really pushing hard to find out where this trophy was. And, you know, I thank you for all of the hard work that you put into that one there, Wolf Soldier 99. All right, now the next one here is going to be something that I actually found, and that would be this green sleeping bag right here. Now, there is another green sleeping bag. I cannot remember which movie it is, but it does come in later. But the first ever green sleeping bag that we will see will be found in Friday the 13th Part 4 in Rob's Tent. So you see when Jason goes ahead and breaks his rifle and everything like that, you'll see that there is still a green sleeping bag inside that tent. So this, my friends, is where I'm going to put this reference would be Rob's sleeping bag from Friday the 13th Part 4. All right. So that pretty much clears out this room for the most part, at least on, uh, you know, there's still something that needs to be found in there. But that is uh, it so far just for that room for today. Then we are going to go back outside here to this conservatory. And one of the coolest things I think I would have to say that I have found is this car. Okay, now the car, a lot of people are starting to speculate that this car can be found in Friday the 13th 
part two, except it's red, and they would find that in the bar scene. Now, could it still be that car? Maybe. But I'm going to tell you right now where you will find this car, and it'll be 100% same color and everything, and that is in Friday the 13th Part 9. This car, as you can see, is found in Friday the 13th Part 9. Jason goes to hell, and uh, that is where the, uh, the woman goes ahead and gets her head smashed into the car door as well. So it's a pretty cool kill, and that is where you will find this car. Now, this one here goes as a huge shout-out to Big Wayne. Again, if you've heard me before, I've said his name. I know he's been shouted out before, but he has found the red hose that I completely just forgot to even notice when I walked out of the door. When I did the conservatory, I just kind of walked past it, never even paid attention to that one spot. But there is, in fact, a red hose here, and he has shown me that you will find this red hose in... Friday the 13th part 3 you can clearly see how it's coiled up right here is the guys on the can in Friday the 13th part 3 I'm showing you a little bit better angle than what he had there in his tweet picture but he is 100% correct correct this red hose is found in Friday the 13th part 3 in the beginning scenes all right now that pretty much clears us out when it comes to the uh conservatory other than those red chairs you still can't find those freaking red chairs there but uh, then we are going to go ahead and move into this item room here and we are going to start out with the cop car all right so the cop car there's been a lot of talk and discussion about this car and what we're going to have to do is we have to look at how it's made not so much focusing on the paint job that's the way i'm going to say this okay and also that's also the way that spike pimp uh excuse me spike pimp spingal is going to say it as well okay he's very descriptive you know he's saying that the the paint job the stripe is a lot bolder it's pretty much really bold it pretty much takes the entire side of the car but if you look at the car it does match it perfectly okay if you come to this angle you'll see that the top dome here the lights on there are two dome lights and you can see that there's a siren right in the middle on top of the hood of that car, the roof of that car. So that is going to put this police car as Friday the 13th Part 5. Now, a lot of people were saying 6, and I did a lot of digging into 6. And if you look at the daylight scenes from the cars that everybody's been showing me, that car is clearly tan, has a green stripe, and has a big light bar on it. But this police car has the two side dome lights and a siren placed in the middle on the roof, which is only found in Friday the 13th Part 5. There is a couple of other cop cars that have the two lights like that, but none of them have a siren in the middle, except for the one in Friday the 13th Part 5. So the paint job is different, but the car would clearly be Friday the 13th Part 5, in my opinion. So that would be a huge shout out to Spike pimp spingal because i believe he's absolutely correct in the way that he's explaining this that the car matches the one from friday the 13th part five all right next one down the list here is going to be this red chair now this one was a huge pain but i found it okay this red chair is found in friday the 13th part two now if you look at this scene here you'll see that terry is sitting in a red chair okay you can clearly see the outline of that chair is red. She's in a red chair, but if you go to the next scene here, just a couple of seconds in, everybody else is in brown chairs. Her chair is the only one that is red, and it's a pretty noticeable red. So this chair, I'm going to have to say, is from Friday the 13th, part two, when Terry is sitting in her red chair on the porch when they're talking about going into town. All right. Now the next one here is going to be the light this one is another one that i have found and it would be the very top right light you will see this is also in friday the 13th part two if you look at the picture here that we've shown many different times we tend to find a lot of easter eggs in it and once again we will find that this top right light is found in friday the 13th part two now the bottom left light here the outside light has been found by two different people i would say now scorpion firestone uh, or excuse me, Scorpion Fire Sum and Razzle Dazzles are both going to get shout outs here for this light because they both kind of came in around the same time, you know, announcing where they found it. And they're absolutely correct as it's found in two different movies. And that's in Friday the 13th Part 4 and Friday the 13th Part 5. You will see that outside light found. Now, the one next to it, we still have not found the other outside light. So be that is completely open to fair game. 
Now, this next one here, the red sleeping bag, has been found, and it was found very fast after I did the item room video, and that was found by Derp Squad Gaming. Now, Derp Squad Gaming went ahead and they tweeted me on Twitter, and they have told me that this sleeping bag is from Friday the 13th, excuse me, not Friday the 13th, we just, we'll, it's just straight up Jason X. If you want to call it Part 10, that's up to you, but it is found in uh, Jason X is where you will find the red sleeping bag as Jason goes ahead and beats the one counselor with the other counselor inside his sleeping bag in the simulator at that time. The generator here has also been found, so to speak. Now, this is a tough one, okay? And the reason I say it's a tough one is because it was found in Freddy vs. Jason. Now, I know that I said that this bear trap was in the 2009 remake, but there's a possibility that it's not. And the reason I say that is because the 2009 remake and Freddy vs. Jason both technically fall under a different license. So there's a chance that that bear trap might be hung on a wall somewhere that we just never really found. But there is a couple of bear traps in the 2009 remake. Now, the generator here that no one's been able to find has been found in Freddy vs. Jason. Again, falls under a different license. But it has been found by Sneeze WVS. Sneeze WVS has found a generator, a small generator right here, as you're seeing by this scene. It does have a little bit of a cage over it, but it is still a small Jenny nonetheless in Freddy vs. Jason. So... We are going to go ahead and give him the shout out for that because that was a lot of work finding it. And that's the only small generator that we've ever been able to find. So hats off to you there. Sneeze uh, or sniz or sneeze WVS. I'm sorry if I'm butchering anybody's names. Uh, you know how I am with these names, but uh, we are moving on down the line here. All right. So the next one here is going to be a shout out to. Oh, here's another name. Okay. Kobe look. Kobe Ka Wayne or Kobaya Laka Wayne. Kobaya Laka Wayne has found the Friday the thirteenth calendar. Again, this was something I completely just you know mind blanked and forgot about. But this calendar can be found in Friday the thirteenth part seven in the very beginning of the uh, movie he was actually very descriptive all those tweet doesn't look like that he had sent me multiple tweets one right after the other pretty much breaking it down as it went along as in three different tweets so Hats off right there to Kobe Lakai Wayne for finding the Friday the 13th calendar in part seven in the beginning scene. You are 100% correct, which is going to lead us to the last one here, and that is this picture right here. Now, this picture and picture frame will be found in Friday the 13th part three. I found this here. Uh, it was something that I just started thinking about, but if you look at it, it's crooked. And in the very beginning scene, and or excuse me, when they first get to Higgins Haven in Friday the 13th Part 3, you know, Chris Higgins takes note that the place looks exactly the same, even the picture frames are still crooked. So that's why it's crooked, you can kind of see it's got that decorative look. So this is the picture frame clearly from Friday the 13th Part 3. Alright, so what does that still leave us with before we start going into theories? That's a good question right here, because I know that's probably one of the next ones people are going to ask, because they're still eager to look for more stuff. So, what we're still going to be looking for, my friends, is going to be this blue cart right here with the wheels, as you see. Somebody had mentioned that they had found it before, but they still have yet to uh, message me back and let me know where to find it. So, they just say they have found it, but that's all I know. So, they found it, but they don't not telling me where they found it. So, we are missing... Man, scares me every time. So, they are, they are still missing that blue cart with the wheels. I believe we are pretty good out here for the most part. Um, and when it comes to the conservatory, along with, uh, I guess, the counselor's room, these red chairs, the red chairs that you can see right there, we are still missing these outside red chairs. We cannot find them at all. We are still pretty lost on those. And when it comes to this room here, we are still lost, believe it or not, on these outs, or, the, or on these what I thought were bathroom cabinets. They really look like you would. these would be like over a toilet or something like that in a bathroom. But when I did my marathon, I came up short. I was like, whoa, hold up. I thought these were definitely going to be in a bathroom, but they're not. So at least I haven't found any in there. Along with the CB radio. Now, you know, we've I've seen some CB radios, but nothing that truly matches the best. You know, uh, one I could probably say would maybe be in Friday the 13th Part 5 in Tommy Jarvis's room. I've clearly seen one there multiple times. I've known about that one from the start. Um, it does have a stick mic and everything like that, but it just does not look right. So I'm not ready to say that that's what it is. 
All right, the next thing we are still missing would be the outside light right here on the right, if you guys are still looking for that. Again, you still keep the Jenny in mind if possible. Um, the the clothing screen, again, I like I've said, could possibly be from Friday the 13th Part 3 in Chris Higgins' room, but the detail is totally different, so we are still looking for that as well. So as you can see, we've actually found quite a bit of stuff, so we're only missing like a handful of different items right now when it comes to uh, finishing out this cabin for the most part. And we do know that we're going to be seeing a cabin update here very soon, hopefully tomorrow or today, depending on what time you're watching this video. We should hopefully get a new cabin update, uh, which could open up one of these two rooms, either the kitchen or the bathroom. So we'll just have to wait and see how that goes. But on to the theories, as I know people have been loving the theories and they want to know more. All right, so the first one here is not so much a theory, but it was, well, I guess you can call it a theory, but it was pretty neat. It was a tweet that went out by Hunter Foot. Uh, you know, he had to be in the tweet, and it actually was suggesting, or say what he was saying was, he was saying, please tell me that the roasting marshmallow stick that he saw in my video is, in fact, the Tom Savini, basically, unique weapon for that skin. And I thought that was really cool. I mean, if I know we've all seen the new trailer where Jason's killing somebody with this, the marshmallow stick. And that's pretty sick, if you ask me. I think it was an awesome kill. If you haven't seen that trailer, I'll be putting a link in my description box down below. But it would be really cool if this was considered the unique weapon for the Tom Savini Jason skin that you could purchase as add-on content at F13Game.com. I think that's awesome. So uh, hats off to at Hunter Foot. You know, uh, again, these are all speculation theories here, guys. Nothing of this is confirmed, but I do think it would be really cool if that did happen. So again, all of these theories, guys, once again, are not confirmed. They are purely all speculation. Keep that one in mind. I don't want people going around saying this is all happening when it's not. We don't know any of it. All right, now the other theory would be from uh, iDefi7. iDefi7 says that he believes that maybe when we find all of the knots or all of the markers to unlock all the knot chart marks, that it may open up a room where we're going to see Pamela Vorsi's head. Now, that could be possible. You know, there's videos out there where people have shown some kind of weird things like that particularly but we don't know if any of that is going to be truly in the cabin really or if it's just something they were working on in the past and they're not doing anything or if it is even going to do anything with that chart so there's a possibility maybe it could maybe it might not maybe it is maybe it isn't who knows we'll have to see how that goes but that was an interesting theory that he had right there the uh, next one would be a shout out to connor uh badan or badine uh, he says that maybe when we go ahead and find all of those not chart triggers that we will be or excuse me the front door will open and then we'll be able to trigger a hide and seek game where we can see how long we can last against Jason. That would be pretty cool. I would love to see that. I think that would be really interesting if we were able to go ahead and have a little hide and seek kind of one on one match against Jason AI in the virtual cabin right there if the front door opened. I'm really stoked and I think that would be an awesome idea if it did happen. Now, the next one would be going as a shout out to Mr. Graves. Now, Mr. Graves has a, another version of uh, what I was saying before and um, Ben Smith. Ben Smith was the one who originally was saying that maybe the character we're playing is you know, uh, Mrs. Voorhees. And, you know, I'm still thinking that could be a high likely. I think it's an awesome idea. But uh, Mr. Graves here gives a very descriptive, awesome uh, idea as well. And he says, what if... We get the last symbol unlocked. We lose control over our character. He runs into the bathroom, looks down at the sink, slowly looks at the mirror, and it's revealed that we're playing as Tommy Jarvis. Says he's breathing hard. Jason from part three appears and kills him. Excuse me, appears behind him. Tommy looks behind him. The screen turns black and we hear a click noise. Chi 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 ha ha ha. Now, that would be pretty cool. I'm kind of hoping that we're not playing Tommy Jarvis. Uh, I'm hoping that since we have 11 counselor slots out here, that if, in fact, Tommy Jarvis does, does come to the game, which nobody knows if that's even going to happen, but if it does happen, I'd hope he would just appear out here and maybe we'll be playing as Pamela still. You know what I'm saying? So that would kind of give us two things is the way I'm hoping for. So we'll see how that goes. We don't know. We don't know if, we're, if the person we're playing is even anybody, but... 
it is a cool theory nonetheless. I do want to add on there, Mr. Graves, that the true uh, saying is not the cheese and haas. It's actually key and ma. So, key, like, K-I-M-A. So, if you guys are out there buying t-shirts and whatnot that says uh, C-H and then A -A or H-A, that is wrong. I will put a link in my description box down below for a video with Harry Manfredini, who actually is the man who went ahead and made the music and the sounds, and he clearly will tell you that the sound effects is 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 k -k -k ma ma ma. So it's like it's like kill her mommy is K I M A. That's the way it is. It's K I M A, not C H H A. So be careful what you guys buy. Again, nothing against Mr. Graves there. It is a common misconception, and a lot of people think that it is cheese and haas when it is in fact uh, keys and ma's. Okay. So moving on right down here, we have another one which I think is really cool. And that would be a shout out to Chris Harris. Now, Chris Harris has a really cool theory. If you look, okay, when we open up all these doors and stuff like that, we're not using our hands. Now, we've said this before, you know, when we were talking about maybe we're playing as Pamela Voorhees that, you know, we're not using our hands and maybe they're just trying to hide it from us of who we're playing as. And maybe that would be something descriptive. But Chris Harris says that he likes the Pamela theory, but instead of playing Pamela, maybe we're playing as Tina, you know, because when you push the A button, you're not seeing the hands. And what he's basically getting at, if you guys have seen Friday the 13th Part 7, is he's basically saying that, you know, Tina is a psychic. She moves stuff with her mind. So maybe that's what we're doing. And that would be pretty crazy. In fact, if we are moving stuff with our mind and then we are playing as Tina. So that would be very interesting. We don't know. We'll have to wait and see. The next one here would be going back to Ben Smith, who is the one who originally says that maybe we're playing as Pamela Voorhees. He wanted to make sure that we understood also that the mask that's here on the table is another thing that kind of led him to his theory. And if you don't remember, just watch if it'll trigger. Yes, it gets. <laughs> Jason, my special, special boy, killed for mother. See, what he's basically getting at about this mask is he's thinking that what if we're not hearing this in our heads or anything like that, or if it's not just some layman sound effects, what if it's just, not, not I didn't say lame, don't go around saying I said lame, I was saying layman as in like, you know what I mean, layman's terms, that kind of stuff, so... If it's not just some sound effects that we're hearing, then maybe it's Pamela actually talking out loud. That's what we're hearing. That's what he's basically saying. So that's pretty interesting. Now, if you haven't heard the theory before, we're thinking that maybe we're playing as Pamela Voorhees. And if the bathroom opens up, there might be a mirror in there and it might show us that we're playing as Pamela Voorhees. Now, I want to also give a shout out to Rain Skull, who's very active on Twitter. He asked a lot of questions and he asked some really good questions. He, he was actually thinking that maybe we're not playing as Pamela and he could be right. You know, like, again, these are all theories. But what he was saying, he had a couple of questions right here, which I actually can actually. Wow, I just said a lot of actually's, didn't I? <laughs> but I can answer these questions. OK, and what he was saying was uh, his, his first question was, why would Jason try to attack his own mother? We can clearly see Jason's trying to burst through the door to get in. Well, the thing is, I don't think he's trying to get in, okay? If, if you know, he's not trying to burst through the door, he's walking outside, in my opinion, and he's patrolling. We never see Jason come up to the door, but we do see him walk back and forth quite frequently, if he'll do it again. Oh, here we go. Watch. Come on, Jason. I know you're coming. There you go. See? He, he walks by. He's in no way going anywhere near the door. So what if he's patrolling? What if, in fact, what he's doing is protecting his mother? You see what I'm saying? So that is what I'm going to have to answer that one. The other thing is, oh, well, you know, he's he wiggles the door handles. Well, why does that have to be Jason? Maybe that is counselor's trying to get in to this house and he's protecting his mom hence all of the screams that you hear out there the counselors may be trying to get in the house wiggling the door handles and stuff like that they're trying to get in and jason is killing them before they get to his mother in terms of protecting her i think that would be pretty neat the other one was the question that he asked was uh why would she have a lot of counselor stuff in her home 
Uh, that one I really can't answer. I mean, I'm just going to say that, you know, there's campgrounds out there. You know what I mean? They, there's a lot of canoes and stuff like that. People have a lot of crazy stuff in their home. I can't say that anything is directly counselor's stuff. I mean, she worked at the uh, Crystal Lake for a while. She was the cook and everything. So, I mean, any of this could just be in her home, I guess. Well, I mean, probably besides a sign, but this is an F-13 museum. So that question, I'm kind of mush- moving more to the side and kind of ignore him because that's just hard to say. I don't think that would debunk anything, but I don't think it would confirm anything either. So that one we could just kind of push to the side, in my opinion. But the other question that is good, good question here is he says that she's dead and he's absolutely correct. You know, Pamela Voorhees is dead. And even if she was alive, Jason would be a child and not an adult, you know, with uh, which is a thing, you know, with the whole team murders and stuff like that. And he's absolutely right. So she would be dead. But the one thing I have to say is that regardless of whether she's dead or not, she was on the uh, slasher backer as saying that there's a chance to unlock Pamela Voorhees. And during the time period that we were able to raise money to hopefully unlock Pamela Voorhees, one of the things that was out already was the trailer, or should I say the gameplay trailer, the first gameplay trailer they had put out for us really. Uh, and that was at the E3 trailer, and what they had in the very beginning was Pamela's gravestone. You know, so this gravestone, being that it's here and that Pamela's dead, to me, does not verify that we may not be Pamela Voorhees, because the, the gravestone was already planned to be in the cemetery, regardless. And if we would have unlocked her, the gravestone would have still been there, so the gravestone would have existed on the same plane as her. But also, the fact remains that they would have given her, uh, given us a playable Pamela Voorhees, and there still would have been adult-style Jasons. So I think that kind of goes with that one. So I still think that there's a chance that we could possibly have Pamela Voorhees as the person that we're playing. But maybe we're Tommy Jarvis, or maybe we're nobody. Maybe there's no mirror in there at all. Who knows? The fact is, theories are fun. And I love to hear what you guys come up with. So if you guys find any more Easter eggs or you have any more cool, interesting theories, please be sure to go ahead and share them with me because, you know, you may get yourselves a little shout out right here in one of my next videos. Anyway, guys, if there is another cabin update coming up here soon, I really am hoping so. You'll be sure to hear it on my channel. And always remember, if you guys liked the video, then please feel free to go ahead and slap that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to join Charminati today. And you guys are more than welcome to go ahead and comment below and follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with all my YouTube videos. I'm Charmin X off. And as always, thanks for watching, and y'all come back now, you hear?